Hi, thanks for joining True Crime with Thelma and Louise. Today we discuss Kenneth McDuff, the broomstick killer. Kenneth McDuff was born on March 21st, 1946 in Rosebud, Texas. McDuff had three siblings. His mother, Addie McDuff, was well known around town as the pistol packing mama. This was due to her habit of carrying a firearm and her violent tendencies. McDuff was well known by the sheriff in his hometown for getting into fights with boys older than himself. Before his murder convictions, he was convicted of 12 counts of burglary and an attempted burglary. He was then sentenced to 12 four-year prison terms, served concurrently but paroled in December of 1965. On the night of the first murders, McDuff and Roy Dale Green were driving around Texas when they came across a car parked near a baseball diamond. Inside the parked car were Robert Brand, Edna Louise, and Marcus Dunham. McDuff and Green approached the vehicle and ordered the three people into the trunk of both cars. Then the two men drove both cars to a remote location where Robert and Marcus were shot in the head. Edna was raped by both men and then McDuff strangled her with a broomstick. Feeling guilty, Green turned himself in and was given a lesser sentence for his testimony against McDuff. McDuff went to trial and was sentenced to death for the murder of Robert Brand. Then as a result of the suspension of the death penalty in 1972, McDuff was given a parole in October of 1989. And although never connected, another suspected victim of McDuff's was Serafia Parker. Her body was found just three days after McDuff was released from prison. So he was not reformed. He began to fight. He started drinking heavily and he became addicted to crack cocaine. During a roadblock, a prostitute named Brenda Thompson was seen. She was trying to kick out the windshield of a vehicle and she had her hands tied behind her back. She was never seen alive again. A few days later, another prostitute named Regina Gina Moore vanished. Then in December 1991, McDuff and Alva Hank Worley were driving around. They were looking for drugs. They spotted an accountant named Colleen Reed at a car wash and they grabbed her. Both men raped her and although witnesses called police, they were too late. McDuff dropped Worley off and later he disposed of her body. Later, while working at Quick Pack Mark, McDuff became fascinated with his manager's wife, Melissa Northrup. Her husband grew worried when she didn't return home from her shift one night. An investigation was launched and eyewitnesses were able to identify McDuff in the area of the abduction. A month later, the body of Melissa Northrup was discovered. And around that same time, the body of a prostitute named Valencia K. Joshua was found. And she was last seen searching for McDuff's dorm room. At this point, McDuff had fled Texas, obtained a new car and fake ID, and became a garbage collector. Soon after Northrop's body was found, he was featured on America's Most Wanted. A day later, he was pulled over on a garbage stop and became America's Most Wanted's 208th capture. During the first trial and the death of Northrop, McDuff was found guilty 
and sentenced to death. Next, he was tried for the death of Reed, found guilty and sentenced to death again, even with no body. After his arrest, Texas began an overhaul to ensure no criminal like him was able to get out on parole. These new rules would become known as McDuff Laws. The location of Moore's and Thompson's remains were provided as his execution date neared. He was even taken out under tight security to provide the location of Reed's remains. On November 18, 1998, McDuff was put to death by lethal injection in the Huntsville prison. If you enjoy our content, please hit the like button and subscribe to our channel. Please join us on Facebook in our group at True Crime and Psychology for more stories like this one. Thank you. Hi, thanks for joining True Crime with Thelma.